Welcome to some questions on our SOX Act of 2002. According to SOX 2002, anyone who knowing alters, destroys, covers up, or makes false entry in a document with the intent to obstruct an investigation within any agency of the United States may be fined and or imprisoned for up to how long? To be honest, this is a straight memorization based question. Just going to blur out the answer here. Going once, going twice, giving you the chance to go for it. It's going to be 20 years. Definitely a memorization based question. We have plenty of those on the exam, which make these interesting to go over with you, right? Because a lot of times it is me just telling you to memorize it. But for the things that are not memorization, I'm here to walk through them with you. Something like this, super important to know, right? It's just a, I'll call it a fun fact. The reason I used the whole question here to show you is I would definitely know this. If I was taking this a test again, I would definitely make a priority to know that it is 20 years for our punishment in this situation. Which of the following criteria is necessary to be an audit committee financial expert specified in SOX 2002? Now you have your audit committee. The audit committee is going to interact with the external auditor and you know, have other functions. There are a couple criteria we need to know for our SOX 2002. And this one actually is pretty tricky. I got to say, I would definitely memorize it because it is super tricky. You need someone on your audit committee who is known as the financial expert. Now, which of these is going to make you a financial expert? You might look at this and say, oh, well, you probably need a limited understanding of generally accepted auditing standards. But then you say, oh, maybe you need experience as a certified financial planner. Or is it experience in preparation of tax returns or experience with internal accounting controls? All of these sound decent. I mean, some of them sound better than the others, I'm for sure. Right? Like, you know, you don't have to be a tax person. So I'm going to cross that off. I mean, again, this is memorization based, but some of these do sound pretty solid. Uh, do you need to be a certified financial planner? This one doesn't have as much weight to it either, right? That's a little specified. It's a little niche. I'm going to cross that off, which just leaves internal accounting controls and a limited understanding of gas. Again, this stands for generally accepted auditing standards, which sounds like it could be a pretty solid answer for being on the audit committee. However, that is not the case. The criteria for a financial expert to be a financial expert on the audit committee is that you need to have experience with internal accounting controls and this may be through past experience or education the question might say oh you worked as a professor of internal accounting controls for 20 years or maybe you worked as the uh, the chief officer for internal accounting controls at a company this is going to be the criteria for your financial expert we'll probably see more questions and great information material on the financial expert throughout I'm sure you saw it in the lesson as well let's keep rolling on According to SOX 2002, conflict of interest provisions generally prohibit directors or executive officers of an issuer from which of the following? Awesome. Well, right off the bat, I'm looking at letters A and C. And, you know, while this question, again, is memorization based, there's so many memorization based ones, we can kind of knock some things out. Well, are you prevented from owning more than 10% of any form of equity or 10% of common stock. These sound pretty dang similar to me. I, I know obviously there are differences in equities, preferred stock. You could you know, talk about that and get into the nuances, but I'm going to cross these off because they are just pretty dang similar. And generally, if you have questions, unless there's a trick here, but there's not, there's not really a trick there. These are just both wrong answers. It's not, those are not going to be something, right? If anything, if anything, let's think about this. We want people who are in control of a company probably to own a good amount of that company because it'll align their interests with that company. We want, we actually want directors and executive officers to own a good amount of equity in a company. That way, you know, I'm not just in it for the bonus, I'm in it to see my investment grow. Great. Now, are we prevented from receiving a prerequisite compensation or receiving a personal loan from the issuer not in the ordinary course of business? Let's talk about this. There's nothing about prerequisite compensation, right? There's nothing eliminating us from receiving that. Let's talk about letter B. This is the right answer, and let's discuss. Now, issuers, these companies that have to follow SOX 2002, 
These are generally prohibited from making personal loans to directors or executive officers. But what is this ordinary course of business? For example, if I, let's say we're Chase, we're Chase Bank, definitely a public company, definitely has to deal with SOX 2002. If I'm a executive or, you know, I'm an executive or director and I have a Chase credit card, I mean, that's a loan technically, but it's in the, that's in the ordinary course of business, right? There's nothing weird or strange about me having, let's say, you know, uh, $10,000 of credit card debt with my the bank, which I happen to be an executive of. But for example, if the if Chase gives one of their executives a million dollar loan and just straight up just says, here's the loan, it's not in your ordinary course of business, have fun. That's that's where we get into our red flag, our area of uh oh, probably shouldn't be doing that. But yeah. That is something the questions might harp on, right? If, if it's just a, a simple something, even if it's in the ordinary course of business, if it's a lot of money, right? Maybe the company says, we'll give anyone a student loan to go get an education, get their MBA. That, that would be the ordinary course of business. Even if maybe it's a, a large sum of money, the company does say that the, they do that, right? I know a couple of companies out there do that and that's fine. That would be in the ordinary course of business. Which of the following organizations was established by the SOX Act of 2002 to control the auditing profession? No one can control us, right? We are the auditors. We are. <laughs> All right. So right here, which of these was established? Well, I'll start from the bottom. IT Governance Institute. I just no, that's not really anything we're going to be dealing with here on the exam. Information Systems Audit and Control Foundation might sound a little more on par, but again, not really something we're going to be dealing with here on the exam. Not, not an answer. Okay, A and B probably sound a little more on par with what we're looking for. The Committee of Sponsoring Organizations, COSO, and you should be quite familiar with the COSO framework, a lot of memorization there, but a lot of free points as well. Was this established by the SOX Act of 2002? Uh, no, I'm actually going to say it was not established by the SOX Act of 2002. This was established by the Treadway Commission, a private organization, private endeavor. This is for public companies. The SOX Act of 2002 established the PCAOB, right? This was the government. The government had nothing to do with the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations. This was the Treadway Commission, private companies. Final answer here is letter A. The PCAOB was created by SOX 2002. And if you've taken the audit exam or you will take the audit exam, you have two pieces of authoritative literature. I'm going to put this in context. Now, those are, remember, the specialized SIMs where you have to go and dig and look for paragraph, subsection that, sentence that. And you have the AICPA. You have their authoritative literature and the PCAOB's authoritative literature, just like in FAR, you have the FASBs. So this is the governing body over public companies, whereas the AICPA is over private companies. So if your authoritative literature question said, okay, you have an issuer, or you have a public company, you're gonna look in the PCAOB's authoritative literature documentation, right? Just to put that in a little more context, make it real for you, tie all the exams together and you'll do well. I'm sure you're doing well as is. These were some good questions on the SOX Act of 2002. Thank you all for joining and keep going strong. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.